Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Carlos D. I'm an artist from Los Angeles, California. In this video, you're gonna see me at the drawing table creating some art. The video is not intended to be instructional, but informative and entertaining. If you learn something from the video, then that's awesome. Joining me today, once again, is my friend Jaime. Thanks for the time for- Thank you. Thank you. for taking the time bro. to hang out, dude. Always a pleasure. Appreciate it, man. So, uh, how you been, dude? Good, man, good. Just uh, doing my own thing and uh, trying to start with my podcast thing, so getting everything ready for it. Okay. <laughs> Many projects, though. What, uh, do you have a time frame when you think that might be up and running? Oh, uh, for sure, in uh, two months. Oh, that's cool. Good, yeah, good, I, have, good. I have everything uh, ready. I'm just uh, putting more uh, artwork in my wall. And cool, making. man. So cool. It's, it's a little bit kind of uh, different when you have a actual video thing because you're trying to get the perfect lighting. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, the other connections that need to to make it work because, you know, the lighting is everything when it comes to making sure, videos. Sure, sure. And, uh, and having the, you know, the atmosphere of it feeling, uh, you know, fun and comfortable at the same okay. time. Cool, man. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, oh, you're going to be there for that. Awesome, man, awesome. <laughs> I, I've been considering, like, doing a video of the conversation, right? Yeah. As opposed to just having my artwork and the art process. Um, but we'll see as things go on, man. But yeah. that's cool, dude. I know you've had it in the works for a good minute, so. Yeah, well, when I used to live in my old house, I, I actually made, uh, in my garage, I made my own little room, uh, which was going to be my, my studio. And then... Right when I finished, it must have been a, a month in, my wife was like, oh, we're moving. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> but um, yeah, we ended up moving and I was like, oh man, I have to rebuild this into the garage. And my my wife was like, no, you have your own room. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. I don't need any, I need to build anything, just mm -hmm. make it my own. So I'm in that process right now where. You know what, man? I think that's an awesome thing because uh, for me, again, with everything that I do, I usually sketch yeah. a couple times yeah. uh, this same exact design. I usually write with, with every design. I sketch a couple times on my dry erase board. Then I do it in pencil. I ink it sometimes. And then I'll do it digitally. So I'm, I'm doing everything so many times over. Yeah. But that just builds confidence. So I can only imagine that you already know. I mean, you literally had to build it, right? You yeah. literally built. I, yeah, I literally had to build <laughs> a section it. of your of your garage for that specific thing. Yeah. So that was your sketch, man. Yeah, that, that was your first draft right there. <laughs> now you're on your second draft, dude. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you don't know how things are gonna go, and the thing that made me feel comfortable this time, like when I was thinking about it, I was like, I'm glad that. The, which I consider what's going to happen with this podcast will be like my main, main one. Mm -hmm. And my first one, like you said, is my rough draft. Yeah. So yeah. it's good that I build it because I know the way I build it, I was like, all right, whatever. It, it works. It works. It was a, it was, um, it was fun, but mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Absolutely. And I threw everything that I learned, every mistake that I made during that process, I don't have to do it to this one and just make it better. Sure thing, man. And, and with that, um, I think every iteration, were you to move into a mansion next year, yeah. right? Into a dream home yeah. next year, dream mansion, everything. That would be your third time putting something yeah. together. And yeah. it's only, it's only going to get better because uh, there's always some, something new that you discover about, about what you want to incorporate maybe with the look or yeah. the sound system or whatever, right? Technology is always upgrading. Absolutely. Um, oh. Cool. Oh, we got a hard two in the house. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. It's all Hold good. So, I'm his phone. It's all good. Oh, yeah, but, um, no, uh, with this, you, you know, you learn a lot, like you said, like, you never know what happens next year. And that's one of the, one of the things I've always been living since I, um, got introduced to the law of attraction that I never kind of, um, set my mind in, okay, it's gonna, this is how things are gonna be f now forever. Mm -hmm. For some reason, my mind is always, you know, Next year, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So very true. From the period of time that I'm now, I learned and I absorb everything. So whenever something bigger happens, I implement that into the new thing. Good, 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 man. Good. You know something really valuable that I learned while I was in the Marine Corps. So I was in the Marines for four years, and every time we would go um, and set up camp. Uh, set up a fighting position, set up anything out in the field. 
we would always get drilled once once we've like organized ourselves to where we at where we're at whatever the mission is okay things are set there's always a period where you feel like okay we're done like yeah. okay we set up everything everybody's in their places every, the you know the, the schedule's organized for the fire watch like whoever's going to take turns you know staying up and I, okay everything's good now look over it again and and make improvements an hour from now look over it again and make improvements oh, wow. the idea of continuously improving your position because things change, right? Especially yeah. in the field, the weather changes. Yeah. Okay, hey, now we got to make sure that everybody's, you know, they had their rain gear. Or, I mean, daily, daily, daily. That is that is something that's always stuck with me, dude. And everything that I do, I'm always looking to improve that's what, what I'm doing, where I'm at, constantly. Because you're like every minute where we have, if we have, if we're engaged in in valuable conversations. You're an hour more mature. You're an hour more wise than you were an hour ago. That's actually that's and true. and now, you 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 have the opportunity to look at your situation, your position, whatever it is, and reevaluate to see what what is more optimal than what I have now. Yeah, yeah. and it might change. And and an hour from now, that change that you made might bring you to another realization. Was like, uh, let let's revert because it's yeah. actually not a good change, but continuously improving. Taking away, adding, taking away, adding of anything that you're doing, it, just in general with art, with whatever it is. Um, but I, I, that lesson stuck with me, dude. Continuously improve your position. That's actually really good practice, man, to do. Really is, dude. I never, because I have friends that went to uh, to the military, but they never talked about that kind of practice. And I'm like, actually, that's perfect uh, workout for your mind in order to mm -hmm. improve yourself in any kind of situation. Be because uh, things are. Ch constantly changing man the the planet is constantly changing you know so anything can happen yeah. like for instance right now this is the first time i see you in sunlight dude yeah the first yeah, time we, true, we, yeah. <laughs> we've always met and it's same time six o'clock in california yeah. but it ha it's been nighttime now that spring is coming yeah. here is day you know it's still bright it's six o'clock it's super bright outside still yeah. and uh you look nothing like your profile pic, bro. Oh, no, nothing at all. <laughs> no, nothing at all. I'm, I'm better than dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is the first time to meet you in, uh, in the sunlight, which is cool. And again, constantly changing. Like, like before, I would have to have it. Okay, make sure. Let me bring my jacket just in case things get cold or yeah. we got to step outside. I mean, this literally applies just to life in general, man. Continuously improve your position, whatever you're doing, wherever you're at. No, it's Very actually, valuable. No, that, that's true. It's like... Um, well, here's an example. Like, every, like, you know, with our family, we have a tradition to, you know, going to um, the LA County Fair, you know? Okay. So, after the years, it's, it's like you, you start, you, you know, every time you go, what shoes to take, what clothes to take. Exactly. Uh, because it's always different. You, you you learn from your last time. You know what? Last time I was wearing this and I got too tired or I was, you know, I took mm -hmm. this and it was a hassle carrying it. It's, it's almost the same. Like you, Great you, point, you, dude. You start to learn. You learn that you is learn. exactly it, dude. Yeah. And uh, one of my sayings, awareness is power, man. Yeah, yeah. If you're aware of everything that you're doing, that that uh, idea of always making improvements, it's going to just be a part of your, your, your natural response to things. Yeah. Like, okay, man, next time I need to bring, let me get in a, uh, bring an extra pack of wipes yeah. because, you know, things got messy and we didn't have anything to clean our hands yeah. with. Oh, okay, cool. Well, let me bring an extra water bottle, whatever it is. But um, it's... Awareness, man. Awareness is power, dude. Well, if, so if if one could continuously be aware of whatever it is that you're doing, um, I think life experience itself is just going to be a level up because but, you're going to be more comfortable more often. Yeah, that's true. Uh, avoid uh, silly situations more often. Yeah. yeah. Uh, life is still going to smack you every now and then, but you can recover from that more often. You know, that's one of the things that I, with me... Um, like my brother always used to make fun of me for because I made a lot, a lot of mistakes. Just embarrassing mistakes when I'm in my early teens and twenties. Okay. And and they always, you know, they can't make fun of me for it. I did embarrassing things. But the thing is that I learned faster from them because I made all those mistakes. Of yeah. course they learned from me. Sure. But sure. from me, I learned them quicker uh -huh. because I'm the one who got embarrassed by them. <laughs> so I learned them quick. Yeah. And I learned to observe other things not to do that were similar like when i saw them coming 
I knew how to dodge him and or go the other route. Mm-hmm. But it got you thinking, you know. And good, that's good. one of the things that I got from it. That's smart, man. That's a good thing. Uh, for me, like uh, every little thing is an opportunity to learn, right? Yeah. Okay, what did I learn? For example, today, dude, I was I was uh, organizing my room a little bit, and I I spilled a cup of water onto the carpet. It was not a big deal, right? But still, it frustrated me. Like, yeah. oh man, you know, now I gotta now I gotta clean this up, right? But in that moment, I'm catching myself and I'm telling myself, okay, okay, okay. What did I learn? What did I learn? What did I learn? What did I learn? Okay, what did I learn? That spot where I placed the cup was a bad spot because it's close to the light switch yeah. for the lamp of the room. And that's what caused me to tip over yeah. the, the the cup. So I'm like, something as simple as that, man. Yeah, yeah. Something as simple as I'm not going to place the cup of water right there in that spot yeah. any any longer to avoid that. Bam, already up. I already went up a level yeah, in yeah. this game that, of life, man. That's actually <laughs> you know? true, man. That's actually true. Uh, because it's it's right. Any anything little, any little thing can trigger you, man. Because yeah, well, in that moment when I dropped the water, I was like, oh man, right? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I want to. And kick sometimes this you man. can't help it. As much as you absolutely have learned to control yourself, there's human. some things that get your number. And, yeah, yeah. You know? We're human. We're human. Absolutely. And you never know that. So instead of a cup of water, can be something more valuable, and you would have tipped it off. Uh, sure thing. So absolutely. It's, it's better that the cup of water was. It was that instead of something valuable. Exactly, valid. exactly, and that and that's uh, the awareness of of that, right? How do I calm myself down? Because my initial response was frustration and yeah. being pissed off, you know, that this just happened. Okay, hey, well, it was just water. One, two, I'm gonna learn. I'm not gonna place that there anymore. Okay, cool. Is it too much of a big deal? No, 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 it's all good. Okay, and move on. Move the on, best move part on. was your awareness of it. You that's know? it, and, exactly. And, and getting to that point where, like, you know what? What? What did I learn from this? What did I learn? Is that's that awareness it. that you know? gives you power that's it dude what did i learn is a great self-reflective question what did i learn what did i learn of anything that happens what did i learn very helpful man very helpful dude so uh this design here um i like it because i'm a lot into skulls cool oh man you can never go wrong with skulls no you dude. never <laughs> you just can't man it's just impossible dude well um uh so this video is going to come out, I believe, on Cinco de Mayo because it's Friday. Yeah. It's next Friday. So I, I had that in mind. Dude, I just knocked this out. Man, yesterday I finished it digitally. I had I had done the sketch on paper maybe on Tuesday or something like that. But I was also preparing um, a sculpture that I just finished painting on Monday that I submitted for the for the Museum of Arts and History here at the oh, Lancaster uh, uh like a juried exhibition because uh, the deadline was today but i'm like you know, let me get the sculpture done because i've been wanting to finish it for a couple of weeks now and i finally got it and you know the the right temperature also for for the paint to dry because if it's too cold it, it yeah. like gets too tacky and and i have to mask it a certain way man it was really tricky dude but back to the, the artwork here i'm like okay okay what's my inspiration what's my inspiration right just coaching myself okay cool yeah. Cinco de Mayo's coming, so um, I'm I'm from El Salvador, right? Born in El Salvador, I came here to America when I was three years old, but um, I don't hold myself to that, uh, like like culturally, like like trying to represent heavy, you know? I'm, yeah, man, yeah. man, I'm human, dude. I'm I'm a, a human with uh, just en- enjoying my time here with all the other humans on planet yeah. Earth, dude. Whatever, man. Borders and races or whatever. Eh there's nothing we're all human yeah so i'm like okay man let me do something to to uh maybe just you know celebrate or something something that would be cool for a single the mayo thing so i'm like okay a skull and a sombrero yeah bam do it okay now how can i make that idea into my my own right a little bit and um i'm an aquarius and i always i love water and i'm yeah. like i love that japanese I, I i spent a year while i was in the marine corps i spent uh one year in okinawa japan and, oh nice and um, so for me, uh, on the topic of where am I from, yeah. everywhere I've been physically on the planet, I consider myself that. Yeah. Okay, I've been, to, I've been to El Salvador, obviously. I've been to America. I've been to Spain. I've been to Germany. I've been to Egypt. I've been to uh, Japan. So I'm Japanese. I'm German. I'm, I'm Egyptian. Yeah. I'm Spanish. I'm, I'm Italian. I spent, that was my most recent uh, overseas trip, a year and a half in Italy. Uh, so I'm all that. That's a good way to see it. And, and 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 I'm like, okay, man, how can I make 
what if I were to, to just like start cross-culturing stuff? And then I'm like, oh man, I'll just do like a traditional Japanese tattoo on the brim of the of the sombrero. So that's, that's where the idea came from. That's a great idea, brother. And I've never seen it before, man. So me, I'm me just neither. like, I, cool, I'm a band. Let, let, let me knock this out. As soon as I saw it right now, I was like, something different about it, and I like <laughs> it. But that's it, that's the inspiration, man. Let me just uh, start. I you know the thought of um, in I don't know if you recall the movie Blade Runner, uh, the one with Harrison one? Ford. Yeah, the yeah. first one, right? Um, uh, Ridley Scott film um, in there the language that they're speaking which is a futuristic language or whatever that they're speaking it's like a it's like a, a really like a California mix of like a Slam. like English Spanish and Japanese yeah. or like like that combat you know yeah <laughs> jumble of uh, of languages and slangs and I and that, that came to my mind like okay it's something Japanese what was Japanese you know and of course like the tattoo culture is has a, a strong Japanese influence from yeah. like the waves and yeah. all that Hokusai is great wave uh, woodcut print and um, so bam just going on that and I'm like cool that it looked cool in my head and then when I pulled it off here I'm like okay I, I, I'm in dude I dig it let me go with it so it looks great uh, I really like this design it's a, it's a good mixture of uh, both yeah man just uh finding inspiration dude and, and and throwing words in my mind right like cross culture cross culture cross culture well, what what things can i do to cross cultures you know um in imagery and uh i liked it man we'll see we'll see maybe well, in the future i cross cross other cultures you know no this is good because it's one of those things where like you're not just focusing on a single race but many races can look at it and like oh i like this because of that and you know it's everything's connected and the unifying thing yeah is the skull oh yeah bam yeah it's, that, yeah we're that's all the unifying that's, thing yeah. that's no matter it. what we all have it exactly man that's a unifying thing really cool but but this was fun it just it was a little bit more complicated um i used uh what's cool about procreate and i'm sure more than likely every design um program has this feature you could do symmetry right so all i have to do is just draw it on one side and it's just so mir awesome. mirroring the opposite. So you can switch it on and off, um, the symmetry uh, feature. But that's, in my mind, I already knew that I was going to use that. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, I, I only sketched out on the sketch itself, just one side. And I'm just like, man, I'm just going to do the the uh, symmetry feature. This, this is a new awesome technology. My daughter is really good at this. Good, um, good. And uh, she's... You know, she's doing her own thing. And uh, for me, I, I don't know why. I, I like it. I like For me, it's like, oh, this is amazing. The the technology, the things that you're able to do with. Mm -hmm. But because in my heart, I'm old school. <laughs> Paint and paper or canvas or whatever it is. That's always me. Like this, for me, it's like, you know, I'll give it a try as, you know, here and there. But I just can't mm -hmm. put myself oh, while I had it in my head. Yeah, yeah. I had a question for you. Um, I, when you come, you know, getting ideas okay. to for a painting. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I'm trying to talk to my other friends that are also artists. Do you consider it? Oh, no, because I think you were talking to, who was it, Nabil? In my heart, because in, in my head, I was like, is it cheating that you're, like, you know, you go to the AI and, like, you focus on an idea. But I know that you said that you kind of got the idea, but not, not, um, didn't copy the idea from the AI mm -hmm. when you asked it to draw or yeah. give you a picture of a mixture of this and that. Mm -hmm. And because uh, in my head, I was like, it, for future people also listening, cause I wonder how they're going to feel about, you know, you're like, they're, they're trying to get an idea for a painting. Sure. And they, you know, type whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it pops up and then they end up drawing the same thing that the AI sure. uh, drew with it. For me, I don't know. For me, it does consider it like it's not you. This is something yeah. that the AI brought into it. It wasn't your imagination sure. itself. Do you yeah. consider it cheating? As in, like, it's not really your work. Personally, um, if we're gonna use the word cheating, uh, I that word implies rules. Yeah. Right. Because I know you, you you'll you'll get little things from every artist. Sh yeah. So th that word cheating implies rules i would say what's the what rule are you breaking yeah, exactly. right yeah, exactly. in art there are no rules 
um, like some people consider uh, using a projector to project even your own drawing oh yeah yeah, yeah. bigger yeah, yeah. some people some people associate the word cheating with that and for me i'm like that's actually well, true. well it like what rule is it well rule is being broken yeah. if it's cheating then there ha there has to be a rule that's yeah. that that you're trying to circumvent or whatever in art there are no rules um i i i understand what you're saying about using ai yeah. as a tool yeah. it's a tool um, I did a painting of of an image that uh, I rendered through what was it? I think it was Mid Journey. I might have used Mid Journey or Lexica. Either way, it was in it was a, one of those programs, right? That that, that are generating the, the the picture. And I just typed in uh, Marilyn Monroe, um, uh, a portrait of Marilyn Monroe, yeah. right? Or whatever, and it generated like three or four. Nice. And I'm just like, okay, cool. I'll just pick one. And I rendered that one in oils, and so it's a small, it's an oil painting, five by seven. Um, for me, that was uh, I just wanted to do it because I wanted to to paint in oil. Yeah. And uh, so, I, personally, I didn't really care what the reference was. Uh, I made a copy of the reference. Yeah. So because I knew I was going to make a copy of a reference, I didn't want the reference to be. A known photo yeah, yeah like you know like you you have you, you can you could just google right Marilyn Monroe and then all these actual photos yeah. of her come out yeah. I didn't want to do that yeah so I wanted but I wanted to do a Marilyn Monroe yeah uh, and so to avoid doing something that someone has already seen yeah I asked AI to generate something new for me yeah and and I made an exact copy I don't intend to enter that in any in any uh, exhibition or contest or anything like that. I just, again, I just did that because I wanted to, to paint in oils and I, and I wanted to do a portrait. And um, just to keep my skills fresh, you know, just, just to stay, uh, just getting back into oil. I, I love oil painting. Yeah. I love oil painting, dude. It's a lot of fun. And um, so I've also asked uh, an AI program to generate a photo like um of a uh, of like a landscape and but just use that as a reference not make an exact copy of it I'm just like okay let me just i just want to i wanted to see what the program generated to try to understand how it was using values yeah. the darks and the lights yeah. right that the dark how it was using values because i asked it to generate a landscape painting in the style of Frank Frazetta. So Frank Frazetta did uh, um, a lot of like the Conan and, and like oh, fantasy, yeah. fantasy yeah. Uh, uh, um, paintings in oil, uh, often in oil, uh, a lot of watercolor and, and a lot of uh, uh, pen sketches. But just out of curiosity, right, I'm like, uh, he never did actual landscapes, but there was always a landscape within the painting that he did. It was always right. like figures either. Um, barbarians or yeah. but they were human mostly a, a couple of creatures and um and and uh monsters here and there you could say but he would always have like a like a like a in the distance like a mountain top or something like that oh, really yeah. cool really cool yeah. you know it's frank frazetta that style but i just out of curiosity wanted to ask the ai to do just a landscape no figures no nothing just a landscape i'm like i wonder what it'll generate right yeah. and it generated some gorgeous images dude i mean like I, personally, I don't think I could, I I could ever like generate those out of my imagination. Not yet. <laughs> At least not very. Dave, hey, man, good point. At least not yet. And, but when it did them, um, you know, within within ten minutes, you have like four images that you can yeah. choose from, right? And they were just gorgeous, dude. I'm like, some of them didn't make sense because like the clouds were kind of like, oh, yeah, uh, like it didn't, yeah, yeah, they were just a little kind of like wonky, right? But overall the composition if you squinted your eye and looked at it from a distance like you know at a small man the 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 movement of valleys darks to lights and and and, and the shadow and the light play on all of them were just like like man this is this is it, it feels like it was something that this program understood about value yeah yeah not just okay it's a frank frazetta style painting like this this yeah. this 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 no man it was like it was like it i mean well understood uh, um 
composition, yeah. uh, shadows and, and lights, um, the movement of, of color. Generally, there were some that were a little like, you know, wonky, but for the most part, uh, like there were, there were some gorgeous photos, man, that the, the, this thing was generating. So, but again, it, so when I did that, I just wanted to do that out of curiosity to study that, yeah. to see if, you know, later on, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll generate some inspiration for me later. Yeah. But if anyone wants, oh, oh, for example, Octavio, I remember um, the conversation that we had. He used AI to generate some ideas. Yeah. Um, and, and then he rendered it himself. Like he just yeah. used like uh, the images as reference, yeah. really, to execute something by hand. That's cool too. I mean, I think that uh, for me, any tool that anyone has that gets them to do something creative, uh, personally, I'm down with it. If you're going to enter a, a competition, an exhibition, uh, a, a juried exhibition, they're all rules. So you should follow the rules, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. More than likely, uh, now with, with these programs that can generate images i think that a lot of the rules are going to be like uh every um artwork submitted has to be done by you yeah. right by your hand whether it's digitally and by I, your hand and i wonder if ai will save those reference you know you, you can ask it to generate something and then to say somebody copies it enters it and then deletes whatever like generated mm -hmm. i wonder if they have something where like they can go like, hey, you know what? Like we've gone through it. every AI. And it shows right here that you generated this. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Well, see if so. If somebody generates it and does a copy of it, for example, like what I did, right? Yeah. I did a copy of a portrait of 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 what AI represented to me as um, its understanding of what I asked it to do. Yeah. Of por uh, portrait of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, if I were to enter that. I personally, um, I would say where I got it from, I would say uh, oil painting, portrait oil painting on um, on wooden panel. Uh, and then I would cite the reference. The yeah. reference was an AI generated image, you know, from this site. I would do that personally. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I don't see, for example, let's say... Uh, I have an idea of some paintings that I want to do in oils. I'm going to do them um, uh, like a classical realism. Just yeah. set up some still lives. Uh, inspired by, I've been watching like a lot of Van Gogh stuff yeah. recently. And um, I want to have a crack at a technique, something like Van yeah. Gogh's technique. Using a lot of color to incorporate into these still lives that I want to do. But... If I wanted to um, maybe get some inspiration or just out of curiosity, I could go and ask AI to generate a still life of uh, seven sunflowers on a uh, green vase in the style of Vincent van Gogh and see what it shoots at me. And then if I were to use that as reference and I wanted to um, enter a competition again it'd be it, it would be different if someone if i got a commission right if somebody yeah. said hey like hey uh um for example he, an idea that just knocked into my head now dude. Yeah. uh i can go on to ai because these are these are uh like free to use yeah. images right yeah. they, open to the public free to use images i type in an image or i, I type in um a prompt so that i can get an image and let's say i do the exact exactly that right a still life of flowers in the style of Vincent Van Gogh. Bam. It generates me four, four uh, images. I upload those images to my Instagram and say, hey, I'll shop these images around and I'll do you a painting in oils of this yeah. and, and cite on there. I got these. These are AI generated images. So they're, they're copyright free. Yeah. So I can do these, you know, yeah. claiming them that I'm going to uh, do them myself by hand. I'll do them in oils. Um, a 11 by 14 500 bucks really like you know i'm shopping these four images around and i'll do them one of a kind and and um and then i'll move on or whatever so i could 
I could do that because anyone can, I can, anyone can commission uh, like reproductions, yeah. right? Like I could reproduce anything for it. I'm Mona Lisa or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, there's a market for that. So there's a market for that where that has real owners, real humans of history owners. Yeah, yeah. This idea that I just spat out here that just came to me is an idea of, of you know, soliciting commissions through the use of the aid of AI yeah. in the positive way, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, allow me to paint, which is what I love to do, um, you know, get the support and you get this uh, one of a kind with it literally is something modern yeah. because that image would have never happened yeah not even out of my imagination because that's that is out of the information of that ai program yeah. that is spitting this image out and now you you have it as a one of a kind you know for example and the same thing i i see it as as even though the ai is um generating it i see it as also that it's like a 50-50 thing because you're the one that came up with the idea to ask the AI to generate. So it's actually also you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I agree. 100%. That's why it's just kind of like a 50-50 thing. It, at minimum, 50-50. Yeah. Maybe it's pulling a little bit more than you. Yeah. <laughs> but at minimum, 50-50. I would yeah. agree, dude. At minimum, 50-50. Um, be, because it still it still requires your human consciousness to yeah. to give you what you want, yeah. like this. Are you familiar with the whole Jet Chat GPT? Yeah, you know, this stuff that's because I, I mean, haven't used it, but no, I, just, I, I, I use know. it because I like writing. Oh, cool! And uh, it's one of those. Uh, I asked it like two weeks ago, write a short story. Uh, today's I'm just in the style of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, which is a cool. big, I'm a big fan of his. Awesome! And it did it, and I was like. And I was like, I can actually write, like, you can, I can actually write this thing down and create it into a book. I was like, that's not, like, the same thing. Like, that's, even though I'm the one who came up with the idea mm -hmm. and the, you know, it uh, generated it, I'm like, this didn't come from my brain, you know. It, well, like, how did you feel about it? Did you I, feel like I'm telling you, you could I'm, move forward with it or were you hesitant? No, but it, deep down, I'm like, it's, it's not me. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> It did, it did not come from my imagination. Sure. Yes, I came up with the idea, right? Yeah. And basically, like, me asking it and receiving it, mm -hmm. I feel like I did a shortcut. Like, it, I did not... It, the AI came up with it, even though it was my idea to write it that yeah. way. But I just... I can't... I, I, that's very I, interesting. Very I, I, interesting. But the thing is, I read the whole thing, mm -hmm. which is great. And I was like... And then I felt a little bit of 75% okay if I were to change certain um, certain words, uh, certain, sure, yeah. certain scenarios, because then no longer it becomes the idea, even though it still has a little yeah, bit of the yeah, idea. Yeah, of course. You're just using that as reference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, rather than the, just the whole chunk of it. It's just the future, man. Just, <laughs> and, and, and that's what, I think that's what my point is, is what we are living in this time, No, ma for me, no matter what, like I, I, whatever tool you have in your bag, use it. Yeah. Again, for me in art, there are no rules unless there are rules. Yeah. Then follow the rules. That's simple. And right now that we're talking about it, I'm just like, you know, most of the time I was normally I would have been waiting for somebody to come up with whatever we're talking about right now and see how it works. But I'm like, you know what? Right now that we're talking about, it, I'm like, let me be the rule breaker and actually bring that out into fruition. Fruition. And let's see if somebody, whatever high you know authors come in like, hey, you can't be doing this blah blah. blah. Like, okay, show me the rule book that I can do this. Exactly. Let, like, let me be the the rule breaker. Let me be the person that uh, inspires everybody to to move forward with their yeah, idea. Ex exactly. You could you could instigate the next movement, or you can instigate. Um, a better awareness of what the rules are yeah. or if there are any yeah, regarding exactly. that yeah. so uh, i and and i think for me i'm i'm 100 percent on board with that mentality dude either do it because you feel like it's something that you would enjoy doing yeah. and in the process if you learn that uh you're either breaking some copyright laws or yeah. whatever it is okay cool now i know yeah. Moving forward, exactly. Cool. Thank you. Now I know, and others know. Yeah. So and now you get to share the knowledge. And that's that's a 
two and one, one, if you know it becomes a, a good thing, then awesome. Second of all, if I get to help somebody else, that you know, let me be the, let me be the one that makes the mistakes, so I can help you. Mm-hmm. You know, not go through the same mistakes I did, and you can just okay, now I can go this way. Yep. It's, you know, the way I see it, dude. Everyone that's involved in art, to include uh, the users of AI, we're we're all digging the same tunnel. Yeah. To discover the next version of ourselves, and sometimes I'll I'll come across granite or, or a hard rock. Or I can't yeah. dig anymore this way. Okay, man, I need to I need to take a two steps to the left and, and dig from there. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, how are you guys doing over there? Hey, man, we're still digging. Yeah. We're still moving forward in this direction. Okay, cool, man. Maybe I'll go closer to where you guys are. Yeah. It's it's all just just moving the dirt out of the path yeah. so that you can discover your own style or your own your own rhythm in life in general and again for me art has no rules in general if you enter a competition contest and things like that there are rules so abide yeah. by them yeah, yeah, you yeah. know read read up on what the rules are and go for it but in art in general there's no rules yeah man i mean we have all the tools you know um before oil paint came around it was uh it was just a tempura let's say no one was using oils not because it was against the rules yeah. but it was just because it wasn't used when oil came around the first users of oil paints they were they were going to getting frowned upon like oh you're because you can you can really really blend yeah. right because oil just stays wet yeah. the longest you can get some amazing blends with that so people were rendering more realism yeah. with oils and those that weren't you know the old school mind it's always the yeah, old yeah. school mind right the old school mind is like oh well that's the easy way or you're doing it easier you know you, you, you know we're doing it old school and this is well okay that's cool had you had these tools more than likely you would be using these tools too yeah, yeah. so for me exactly yeah, yeah for me I, i'm about keeping up with the times okay how many tools do i have at my disposal okay send them my way i'm gonna use them yeah. and if along the way i learn that hey that's uh I can't because of something specific, not because of people just saying, oh, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. I don't care. Again, yeah. for me, show me the rule book. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, I'll keep moving forward. So I'm all about AI. If you're using it as reference, 100% cool. Cite it. Yeah. Cite the reference. Cite your reference that it was from an AI image. Yeah. Um, but if you're doing it, you know, yourself by hand, you know, the whole line of the description of, of what materials you used it's there's enough space on there for you to say everything you use man yeah so i'm 100 percent on board dude so this chat gpt i've never used it or taken a look at it um but it's 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 only for um like like verbal information or written information it doesn't do pictures that or does um, it? I, no not pictures unless i haven't really digged into it but that's no more picture. like the mid-journey and, yeah and it, you know, it gives you whatever, whatever you ask of it. It uh, gives it to you. It'll write you a book mm-hmm. like in minutes, sure, and well. all that stuff. But it's it's interesting, man. This new thing that that uh, this new thing that is coming to us is like it's fascinating. You know how I see whenever whenever I first like you know listening to the Joe Rogan podcast, there's uh, it comes up often the Chat yeah. GPT yeah, stuff, yeah. right? And uh, uh, again, I'm not too familiar with it, but it, as as I hear the conversation moving forward, it sounds to me like it's the equivalent to a calculator. Yeah. Where where a, a calculator you could punch in a crazy amount of digits, yeah. multiplied by another crazy amount of digits, yeah. and it'll shoot you the answer, right? Yeah. Where this is just the calculator that calculates um, uh, conceptual information, yeah, because but, all it's doing is 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 pulling information from the internet, right? Yeah. And the thing is with with this, and it's not like a calculator where you know or give you the right answer. This, you know, the AI still has rules because I try, uh, I, I I try to press uh, what stocks to put my money in, gotcha. and it will not answer that question. Uh, you know what I mean? Like sure, sure. AI basically, you know, it knows everything that has to do with the internet. Everything, every little thing, yeah, every so that's answer, what I- but it will not tell you. What stock is gonna be higher tomorrow or whatever, you know? Yeah, that I think so <laughs> when, when still, money, yeah, when it comes to money, when money so, comes to play, yeah. then then they could be liable to get sued. Yeah. I, I, I suppose, right? On, on that, so any, that kind of stuff, like you know, like 
what do they have in Area 51? Stuff like that. They, <laughs> you can't, you can, no, they will not answer you. Oh, so, man. Um, that, damn, dude, that, that's a great question, yeah. right? To ask that thing, man. If it, like, man, just show me. Tell me what's in Area 51. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's, it's, just, it's the same thing where, where, I, where um, when I'm watching TV and I'm watching those, uh, uh, those shows where uh, the medium is talking to the to the family and I'm like ask it if it's a heaven for the love of God is <laughs> ask him like but then none of them all I must have watched over a thousand uh -huh. of them <laughs> never has that question and when it, and the times that I've gone with friends or family members to certain mediums mm -hmm. I'm the one never goes no uh -huh. in my head I'm like it's because of they like the universe whatever knows that I'm going to ask that question and it does not <laughs> want me to ask it. So yeah, I was like, okay, I'm yeah. fine, whatever. You're going to ruin business. Yeah, bro. I'm going to ruin business. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, whatever. That's funny. Oh, but with the, with the AI, I was going to go back to it. I think after, once uh, you start, uh, I think, asking it to generate a certain amount of portraits, you know how you say that sometimes the AI has different type of imagination that we we don't have? I do wonder if, after seeing a bunch of them, if our minds will start to start thinking like the AI and start and st um, generating our own from our own imagination. Uh, that's a good question, dude. I, I, it's difficult, man, because utilizing the imagination is um, it's it's tricky, man. It's tricky, dude. Very tricky because it's not like like the tablet is the tangible thing right i'm referring to the video yeah. the tablet is a tangible thing if if i see an image on there i can hold the image there and yeah. just stare at it yeah. where in imagination man is very difficult at least generally speaking it's very difficult to hold an image oh, yeah. to hold like you i mean it's a couple seconds you lose it you have to regain it a couple seconds you lose it you have to regain it it's doable in that in that way. I think that's how a lot of images come to my mind, where I'm, I'm literally seeing the iPad in my mind, yeah. right? And it's okay. I'm generating that. Okay, well, well, what would look cool? An oval here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What would look cool there? Oh, a skull. Okay, cool. But it's but it's not the details of the idea. Yeah. It's just kind of like a glimpse. Yeah. A glimpse. A glimpse. A glimpse. And the more words I use yeah. of these words that I recognize as these objects or ideas, then that mental image just kind of like pops up again yeah. and then it goes away, pops up again and then it goes away. I ra so, I'd rather lose the image of the, I'd rather lose the side of the image mm -hmm. than lose um, a tone of a, a song. Like yeah. when you're making a beat, yeah, yeah. And you know it's good, I'd rather, the image, I don't care, but uh -huh. the beat of the song, it always, when I was young and I like, wanted to play music, I always had a beat in the song. Mm -hmm. And I just kept on repeating it so I wouldn't lose it. Yeah. And just practice it at home. But if I were to lose it, I'm like, oh. With, with music, it's, a, it's a, a lot easier if you, if you understand music theory. Yeah. Because you can write down the notes. Yeah. Every, every note has a sound. Yeah. And that sound doesn't change. Only octaves change, right? On, like the pitches, right? Yeah. So... Um, a, a, a person, a professional, not like me, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I barely know the scales on, or, or the notes on the, on the fretboard of the bass guitar, <laughs> but um, you, if you and I were professionals and we wrote symphonies or whatever, yeah. we can literally have a, a conversation in, in A minor. Da da di da 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 da, and then you would respond da 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 da. Okay, da 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 da. All those, all that stuff is just notes. Yeah. So, what's super valuable, if anyone is learning music, in at, at any stage, whether advanced, but don't, you know, don't have it completely grasped, which is something that I'm currently trying to grasp, is how to translate the sounds into notes yeah, because it's valuable, man. Yeah. You just Right? As soon as you hear that rhythm in your head, oh, okay, let me write it down. It sounds like da, da, di, da, 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 da. And in whatever instrument is in your head, yeah. you just re relay that once you get back home or whatever, right? I didn't know that. <laughs> and that, that's the amazing thing about music, dude, is that you can literally see it. Yeah. You can see what you hear yeah. if you know how to, how to, yeah, yeah, how exactly. to speak that language, right? Yeah. And how to translate that language to, to notes. So you, so you do the, the, the treble clef, right, which is... Uh, the top one and then the bass clef on the bottom if you're doing uh, piano the bottom is for your left hand top one is for your right hand and 
as long as you can hear it and you're able to translate that, you just write it down, write it down, write it down. It, I love I love seeing um, like like people write down music, man, because I, I'm like I'm like man, that's so cool that that you can write down what you're hearing, yeah. and then when you play it, it even the timing, right? Because yeah, timing in music is is incremental, a quarter note, an eighth note, a sixteenth note, and it's and like it's so amazing that you can literally write down sound yeah <laughs> and, and the whole the whole thing ends up being a song but it's written yeah, it's that, just cool man no, that concept that, is so that, cool to me dude that that's it's that, such part an of genius thing. right there because yeah man i had a friend that he played the piano and every time we had to made a tune he goes he went he used to go to his piano and like okay hold on like you like you were uh-huh. saying like he didn't write it down he played his piano in order to make a beat of a sound. Awesome. So for the guitar. Like, yeah, for the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that well, before. That's crazy. Too, I'm like... It's pretty common. And, and even when... Um, last year when I was making uh, the shorter videos with for the still life oil paintings that I did, um, I was really experimenting with that. I would, I, would, I would do... Which is a common exercise is to draw out the circle of fits. Yeah. So F, C, G, D, A, E, B. You, you write it down and you... You, I would do the whole thing, right? Yeah. And in the mornings, before I would get to work, I would, I would like standards, dude. I would draw it out five times, yeah. and then, and then, for for every video, I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick out um, a a key and write that key out and write all the chords for the key, yeah. and then just mess with that, just mess with that, just mess with that, and I'm like, man, this is it's so easy to write music like this, man, because it, at least for me. Uh, I'm I'm really visual. Yeah. And I'm like I can see in writing what I'm supposed to be doing with my hands. Yeah. And then I can see all the notes that I'm supposed to play to stay within that key. Yeah. So I know okay, I'm not supposed to touch that white key and I'm not supposed to touch that black key. Everything else is game on. Okay, go brr. And then it moves fast, dude. It's really it's so uh, I I I would advocate for anyone that wants to get into music, learn piano. You learn piano, man. Everything I, else is 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 in the pocket. Me, dude. when it comes to instruments, I don't know how to play none. But <laughs> piano has always interested me. I'm the, okay. I like you know opera. The the like for some reason that just you know it calmed me down. I zoned oh, out. Cool. But piano was always one of them. Okay. So I understand why a lot of people like. It's an amazing yeah. instrument, man. It's so versatile, right? You, yeah. I mean, you're literally you're playing bass and treble at the same time. I mean, it's. You you can move around from octave so fast and man I recently got into this I I, I sent a clip to uh, Octavio about this this uh, jazz band that I've been listening to recently it's called Medeski Medeski Martin and Wood it's a three piece jazz band bass player drummer and some dude on the keys I'm gonna listen to it right now man dude this dude I think uh, it's John Medeski billy martin and chris wood i believe it's the names of the, of the gentleman but the dude on the keys is just going crazy dude i mean he's just gnarly man but but it's like an organ and it's an old school organ it's probably like when synthesizers were first really starting to to be more uh commercialized All right. because he's he has like six or seven different keys set up but but it's um as jazz bands are usually uh, a real uh, like piano heavy, yeah, right, yeah. right. The piano gets really the the the, the most highlight. Yeah. Um, man, this dude's uh, when when he gets to his freestyles and his wailing, oh my he god, dude, it. man, he goes <laughs> off, dude, and he's just like smacking, like it looks like it looks quite unorganized, right, yeah, and yeah. it looks like he's just going off, dude, yeah. but. Obviously, you know he knows what keys he's smashing, yeah. right? And it's just so cool, man. It's 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 real energetic jazz, dude. And um, it man, uh, that trio was badass, dude. I I really dig those guys, man. But but to see his mastery, right? That it just looks like he's literally just like it's like, it's like exactly like a little kid. Yeah. But everything is on time and tune, you know, in yeah. sync on on key. And man, it's 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 a kick ass band, dude. If there's any jazz, uh, what's the name of the band? Medeski, Medeski, Martin and Wood. Okay, it's a three piece. That that's the name of them. Medeski, Martin and Wood. Um, man, 
outstanding, dude. A lot of fun. A lot of energy, man. A lot of energy in that jazz group. I always like this jazz group. Yeah, really cool, dude. No, but this uh, this drawing man, is looking great. Thanks, man. I do, I do like the the the, comp- the mixture of the the concepts, the skull, the sombrero, the Japanese. Yeah, man, Japanese inspired uh, ways that, and it's interesting how how uh, you in, in the tattoo world, right, to depict the sky. Uh, like like man how did they come up with this idea right and it but in a way it kind of like uh these these moving lines yeah. right these like dark to shadow lines of what was depicted as, as the sky uh i i suppose it's kind of wind right yeah. wind maybe kind of leaves like this streak yeah. sometimes but that's so cool that that's a concept that was that it's basically the standard right if you want to do a background to waves a background to anything like japanese yeah. you use this like this aesthetic this, uh, it was funny because i was uh watching a documentary on um van gogh and they were talking about cool. his waves and like like how they're talking about how in the world did he create this uh thing in where you you can actually like once you see it, you know that it's the wind or mm-hmm. the sky the the way that he did it i'm like how did he come up with doing just like this, uh his his style and you can tell what he's trying to form from the same, from the Japanese, yeah. Oh, from them. He got that from oh. the Japanese, from ja- from uh, looking at Japanese woodcut prints. Oh, that's, see, that's because good history. W- when you cut, when you cut into wood, right? The woodcut it leaves a specific mark. Yeah. Right. It leaves that, and if you see those marks, look very similar to his brush stroke because he's just putting putting a, a stroke there, putting a stroke there, putting a stroke there. Yeah. That's very very similar to the result from wood cutting. Uh-huh. And and in that time, uh, the 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 post impressionist, um, which is what he's considered Van Gogh, there was there was a a lot of trading of Japanese woodcut prints, right? Because they weren't they weren't really seen yeah. uh, until uh, Jap- Japan started trading out with, with Europe. And those were were really something new and it was catching the attention of these guys. Oh, really? um, and uh, even in some some of his uh, self, it might be a self portrait or a portrait of someone else. And, and he has a wood. He painted a woodcut print yeah. that he had in the in the background. You see it hanging on the wall. It's really cool. That's a, that's awesome. Because um, then I, I've seen the the word going back to that thing where you were talking about um, how they use the projector okay. to make the image bigger. Because mm-hmm. I know I was, I was sitting in a pose, but I don't know if it was true or not that. Um, Da Vinci used to use that, or th- that's not. I, I believe, I believe in his time there was something uh, called the uh, Camera Lucida, okay. which is, which is, a uh, kind of a projector. I, I believe that uh, Caravaggio in his time he 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 did use it, where it's um. There's there's is interestingly enough there are apps that are that kind of replicate that okay so what you're doing is is uh let, let's say you have an ipad and you set that up you connect the ipad to your phone yeah and you you do like um uh an image and you bring the opacity down like 50 yeah. percent. so when you make the connection to your phone you can literally see yourself drawing oh right but the image is overlaid right yeah with the opacity reduced so that you can see yourself on oh, your nice. phone from the camera from the ipad and you can draw on the wall exactly and you all you're doing is tracing all right. something very similar to that but it was stationary it was stationary and it had like like reflective mirrors mm-hmm. that i don't really know the exact way that this uh camera, camera lucida function but it was very similar to that it's you're you're looking down and it's projecting the image down, kind of like a projector, like okay. a, like an overhead projector, you yeah. know, from the schools. But it's doing the inverse. So whatever uh, image it's pointing at, yeah, it's it's observing observing that and 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 pushing it down onto what they would like trace or whatever. Oh, right on, right on. So that's where they they would get you know they would have the people posing. Okay, yeah. cool. And they would do their outline sketch real fast. Okay, cool. And then they would move on forward from that. Oh, that's crazy. So there, there's always been gadgets. There's yeah. always been tools used to make 
the job of the artist easier, yeah, faster, um, because I suppose back then, just like now, time was money also, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, like the sooner you can turn out an art, a, a piece of artwork, yeah. the sooner you can move on to your next one and yeah. and, and and keep income, you know continuous income yeah because a lot of their work you know you see like oh it took him two years took him three years and like <laughs> absolutely absolutely man so what whatever tool was available i'm sure they used it all dude uh, again caravaggio you see this dude's paintings are of realism he yeah. does a lot of uh um like uh, christian uh symbolism his yeah. paintings but just on the technique and and um and his his ability to to render using oils was just i mean outstanding and uh this dude was i mean that was the method you you use that to get you faster to the painting process yeah. because once you get to the painting process that in itself is a long process yeah. you have to layer you have to let that uh, layer dry you come back to it so um that's cool, a, a, a bunch of tools man everyone use whatever you want <laughs> Yeah. Use whatever no you rules, want. Man, no rules, man. No rules. No rules, unless there are. And yeah. if there are, go buy them. You know, yeah. abide by the rules and and be the best version of yourself within those guidelines. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. good. Cool, man. Well, uh, we're coming up to the end of the video here. I have to tattoo this on my back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell my brother to tattoo me. <laughs> yeah, well, man. This Feel free, brother. You you'll see the 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 end at the very end. Um, uh, the actual process will as far as like the complete um shows up with the the digital process but this is nice cool man well uh to the audience out there thank you very much for hanging out once again um this is always fun for me uh i greatly appreciate all the support um all the positive vibes and uh if you enjoy the video and you want to show some love the best way to do so is to pick up some merch get yourself a t-shirt a tank top or some stickers a link to the shop is going to be in the description below if you would like to contact me for commission you could do so uh, through email you follow me on instagram as well uh, and lastly feel free to share the video and spread the word about the channel i greatly appreciate the continued support in helping the channel grow and uh jaime anything else in closing brother just uh, i want to say thank you for having me again man it's always a pleasure cool, uh, cool. being here I learned, you know, I learned a lot from you and everything <laughs> that you showed me, man. This is great. Cool, cool, um, man. But yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, oh, thank you for taking the time to hang out, brother. Always appreciate it, man. Uh, again, dude, this is just uh, hanging out with friends, man, yeah. and with you, getting to know you as well, man. Because yeah. you know, the first year we, we meet and stuff. So this is a very cool process. It's a very cool thing. Um, for me, I, I always leave every encounter with with uh, my friends with a a lot of positive energy yeah. so that it's really cool for me man but um to the rest of the audience out there take care enjoy life and be kind